Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks and welcome to a Tuesday chatting with old T-Roy. Appreciate you joining us today. If this is your first time here, this is where I answer your questions. So if you've got a question for me, just ask it in the comments section down below where you would normally say, hey, love the video, you know, type your question in there. I'll add it to a future chat. And I appreciate the questions that all of you did ask over the last several chats. I've been doing a lot of traveling. As you can see, I'm a grandpa now, so uh, had a nice, great, uh, fantastic time visiting uh, with my son and his wife and their new daughter. So I got a granddaughter. So did that for a couple of weeks. I know it's been, I've been gone for a while, man. So did that for a couple of weeks. And then I came back home, kind of chilled out for a few days. And then I went to Louisiana. Went to go see my grandma, Mama Jean. She was turning 93 years old. And I got some video footage of her cooking for you folks. So y'all stay tuned for that. I left Baton Rouge and went down to New Orleans. Y'all know my brother Sean, Moonshine's Roadhouse here on YouTube. I'll put his link up here for you. But I uh, went down there. He's getting married. So uh, I got a new sister-in-law now. Love you, Carrie. Miss you, Sean. It was great to hang out with all y'all, man. I got to hang out with Sean for almost a week, man. It was fantastic. And the day after the wedding, I hoteled it over to Mississippi. Got to go see my good friend Russ Jones over there at Smoky Ribs. Tell you what, man. Had a great time. Oh, Russ cooked us up. By, oh, not only Russ was there. Russ also invited um, Jack Jack's drink water. <laughs> and uh, I put Jack's drink water's link up here. He's on YouTube, and he's also got a uh, website called The Bearded Hiker, I believe. I'll put I'll put the information down below, and I will also put in this corner Smoky Ribs. If you're not familiar with, I'm sure you're most of y'all are, but. Uh, if you're not familiar with Russ over Smoky Ribs, y'all go check him out, man. Fantastic channel. But Russ cooked us up some surfing turf. Sure did. We had some fresh Gulf shrimp that he boiled up in a crab, crab, crab and crawfish boil. Um, what else? He uh, cooked us some fine steaks from a Matador Prime. Tell you what, man, it was a, it was a blast. I didn't get to hang out all day with Russ because it was about a 12-hour drive back to Austin, and I needed to get back to Austin. So hung out with Russ till the cook was done and his video shoot was over. And uh, then I hotelled it, and I got I got about four hours worth of uh, road under me. And then um, next day rolled up and got the rest of the way to Austin. So I had a blast, but man, I'll tell you what, it sure is good to be home. Missed all you guys out there. Appreciate your uh, support and all that. And uh, I, again, can't thank you enough for all the support and uh, well wishes on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Y'all were sending me, you know, hey, Troy, you okay? And that kind of thing, you know. But, we're doing good, man. Doing real good. Doing real good. I just took some time off to do some traveling with friends and family. And get to hang out. Had a great time, though, man. Uh, oh, Red's Barbecue and Pizzeria sent me some beer. I think I mentioned this in the last chat. Or one of the recent chats, anyway. I, I don't know what this is, Red. This is a, it's just a label. It doesn't really have anything on here. You know, that tells you what it is. We'll pop a top. We're going to find out. I need some fingernails. We're going to find out what it tastes like. Let's see here. Man, it's rusty. I ain't done this in a while. Y'all bear with me. It's got some, like, grapefruit taste. Uh, which I like grapefruit. Pink grapefruit, especially. Cheers. So anyway, what I was getting at, I hadn't, I hadn't done this in like over a month, it seems like. So I'm a little rusty. Y'all bear with me. We're going to get to some questions. I just pulled some of the questions from mo one of the uh, recent chats anyway. And those other questions that I didn't get to, I'll answer them in the very very near future. And again, if you got questions for me after watching this episode, ask them in the comments section down below. And if I don't get to your question within, say, a month, go ahead and ask it again. I'd appreciate it. Let's get to it, folks. What do you say? First questions from Pickles Barbecue. What's up, Pickles? Man, Pickles just did a video. Uh, I think he shows you how to make pickles, if I remember right. I didn't watch the video yet, but I saw it come up on my live, my feed, you know. Anyway, Pickles, what you got for me? He says, uh, great Q&A as always, T-Boy. Appreciate you, Pickles. He says, if you're doing chicken on the Weber Smoky Mountain, how do you end up with crispy skin? Uh, cheers, brother. Hey, cheers to you, Pickles. Appreciate that, man. And y'all go check out Pickles. Any YouTubers I may mention in this video or any of my videos, 
I'll usually put links for them down in the description box. Just hit show more beneath the video. If you got a full screen, shrink it down so you can see the show more beneath the video. Hit that. It'll open the description box. I got a bunch of information in there. And like I mentioned before, I am not going to be going through and listing all of the questions. So if any of you out there want to do that, go ahead and put that in the comment section along with timestamps if you want. And I will pin that so it will be at the top of the comment section. Appreciate it. Y'all have done that in the past and I do appreciate it sincerely. So pickles, what you do, what I do when I'm doing chicken, I'm smoking a chicken. I'll put it on the smoker and just let some smoke get on, get in the meat, you know. And, uh, and towards the end of the cook, say when the chicken starts getting around 145 or so internal temp, then I'll crank the heat up. Or if I'm, depending on the cooker I'm using, I may just put the chicken directly over the charcoal briquettes or a lump or whatever and just flip it, flip flop, flip flop, you know, every minute or so to get that skin all crisped up on there. Otherwise, if you're in an offset or a WS, well, WSM, go ahead and crank it up. And, uh, or if you're doing indirect on the kettle or your Kamado Joe, any of them, you need heat. Crank it up to about 325, 350, somewhere in that range. And um, the chicken can still be indirect, but it will crisp that skin up. So that's how I do it. That was a great, great question there, Pickles. Appreciate it, man. Next question is coming from Joe Costa, J JLC, says, Hey, T-Roy, Joe Costa here. Cheers, brother. Cheers to you, Joe. There you go. <clears throat> Appreciate the question, Joe. He says, I've done some research on smoking full packer brisket, about 20 pounds or so, and two pork butts on the Weber Smoky Mountain at the same time. And I don't see a general consensus, consensus on which meat should go on top versus the bottom. What's your opinion, and which would you rather, which would you use to complement both meats? Keep up the fantastic work, Joe. I always put the beef on the top, no matter what it is I'm doing. Uh, beef always goes on top because it's not going to um, interfere with the flavors of the other meats that you have. You don't want to have poultry or pork juice dripping on your beef. Uh, it's unsanitary, and you could get some you know, some diseases from that. Uh, I've never had diseases from that, but uh, I've never usually tried that. I think maybe one time I did that, but um, I think I was cooking at a higher temp, so it, it cooked it quicker. Anyway, bottom line, put your beef on the top, put other stuff down on the bottom. If you're doing beef, pork, and chicken, do it in that order. Beef on top, poultry in the middle, and then chicken on the bottom. Uh, poultry meat is that's nasty stuff when it's raw, man. You don't want those poultry juices dripping. Pork, not quite as bad, but poultry, put it always on the bottom, man, always. And put pork, pork beneath the beef. That's my two cents. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Y'all be careful when you're cooking out there, folks. And especially with poultry, wash your hands, wash your cutting boards and knives and all that right as soon as you get a chance to. And if you need to, Pour some Clorox in your sink, man. Scrub that sink down, too. You don't want all them uh, poultry juices up in your sink. Y'all just be uh, sanitary out there, folks. Appreciate the question, Joe. Next question comes from Jay Kennard. He says, hey, Troy, when smoking on my Weber Smoky Mountain, after about 12 hours, the temp on my dome thermometer drops, but the temp on my digital thermometer stays the same. At first, I thought it was just a defective thermometer on the dome, but I've noticed that when the temp drops the temp of my meat starts to drop. I've checked the temp with six different digital thermometers and I get the same result as my main digital thermometer. So which should I trust? And if a dome thermometer is correct, what would cause it to drop at 12 hour mark every time? No matter what I do, I cannot get the temps back up. Jake, uh, sounds like you're running out of charcoal, man. That's what it does. Uh, charcoal usually 12 to 15 hours. If it's dead heat of summer, I maybe get 14 or 15 hours on my Weber Smoky Mount with a full load. Uh, in the wintertime, I'm probably pushing 8 eight to 12 hours, depending on how cold it is. So that 12-hour mark, that's usually when your coals are starting to run out, my man. The um, What I would do is take the lid off, take the dome off, you know, and move around your charcoal briquettes to get knock the ash off of them and add more if you need a longer cook. Go ahead and add some more where there's still some lit charcoals down there. Let all that ash get out of there and then put the lid back on. That's how I generally do it. The other issue you're probably seeing is um, 
with the dome thermometer, when heat rises from that Weber Smoky Mountain, it's going around that water pan. So it's coming up the sides, the side walls of the Weber Smoky Mountain and hitting the dome and then coming back down to the meat. So that dome thermometer is usually going to read hotter than the grill grate. And also, the heat from the bottom is heating up that water pan, especially if you're using water or sand. And even though your coals may be dying out, that, that water or sand is retaining heat. So your grill grate thermometer is still going to read a higher temp, even though the coals are running out and that heat's coming up to your lid dome and uh, not reading as hot because your coals are going out. Sounds like a classic case of you needing to add more charcoal though. That's what I would that's what I'd stack it up to. As far as which thermometer to trust, I always trust my digital thermometer that's sitting next to the meat on the grill grate. That'll give you a much much more accurate reading of where the meat is. Because your meat's not up in the dome. It's down, you know, a good eight inches or so from the lid. From the top of the lid. Hope that helps, man. Appreciate the question, Jake. Cheers to you, brother. Next question is from Jerry Lingle. How you doing, Jerry? He says, hey, T-Roy, is it safe to give our furry friends cooked bones? I've always given my pups raw bones because I was concerned they could splinter and uh, splinter once cooked. Cheers to you. Hey, cheers, cheers to you there, Jerry. Appreciate it, man. I, I, I need my training wheels on, man. I feel lost. That's <laughs> so what happens when you don't make videos for a while. For all you guys out there that are doing videos on YouTube, Man, if you take a month off, it takes you a few videos to get going back in your rhythm again. So, again, bear with me. I appreciate it, man. Let's see, Jerry. Um, do not ever give poultry or pork bones to your dogs or your furry friends. And never give any cooked bones to your furry friends because you are correct. They will splinter. So, no cooked bones, no poultry bones, no pork bones beef bones or bison bones if you can get that that's what I would do um, I think lamb is okay pretty sure but beef bones uncooked that's the way to go man great great question there Jerry and appreciate the support man next question oh it's my buddy Christopher Brown how you doing Chris cheers to you brother you've been around a long time Chris says to the best of your knowledge are there any temperature probes that are wireless probes? I'm using, the ones I'm using are looking kind of sad these days. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris, there are two of them that come to mind. One of them is called the meter. And I think the other one's called the meat stick. I think that's what it is. I think both of them are on Amazon. My, my issue with those, though, and they're about 70 bucks U.S., give or take a little bit. The issue I have, especially with the meter, and uh, they were actually contacted me asking if, if I would be interested in trying one out on video, and I refused them. Uh, it looks like it works great, especially like for rotisserie cooking and stuff. But, man, that thing is thick. It's like as big around as your pinky, and that's a large hole that it puts into your meat. I don't particularly like that. I'd rather the little skinny probes with the wires attached. So uh, that's that's what I would prefer. But if you're wanting a truly wireless with no wire temp probe that will register on some device, a receiver, look at the meter or the meat stick, both around $70 U.S. Appreciate the question, and thanks for the support there, Chris. Next question we have is from D's Backyard Barbecue. He says, hey, to you, boy, how's it going? Doing great, man. Living life fully and definitely enjoying it, man. God, I had such a good time traveling, visiting family and friends, and getting to see my new granddaughter. Mm -mm -mm. That's cool. I'll try to see. I, I haven't even looked at that footage yet, uh, especially the one with Mama Jean where she's cooking for you guys. That was fun, man. I had my mama working the camera while I was helping Mama Jean in the kitchen. That was cool. But I'll see if what kind of footage I got and I can put together for you guys. Y'all may be interested in that, and, and uh, once I look through it and kind of edit it a little bit, I'm sure I'll put it up for all y'all. Let's see. D's Backyard Barbecue. That's where we were. Okay. 
He says, uh, thanks for being so open with your knowledge and experience. Uh, you're quite welcome, man. And in fact, thank all of you for helping me. You know, I don't know everything. You know, I don't claim to know everything. I'm not a real chef. I just like to have fun cooking. And uh, the food I cook, I like. And most of the people that have tried it, they like it too. That's why they keep coming over here and visiting me and getting on camera with me, man. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a great community. We all learn from each other. All the other YouTubers that are out there that I've met are fantastic. Uh, I've got some, some actual fans that contacted me recently that are in this area, in the Austin area. So maybe I'll hook up with them, you know. Uh, I'm not going to invite somebody that I don't know, that I haven't met yet over to my house. But, you know, once we kind of meet somewhere and have lunch together or, you know, just have a beer together or something at a restaurant or something, I get to, get to know you, get a feel for you. If you turn out to be okay, maybe I'll have you over. Probably not, though. <laughs> Karen don't like strangers in the house, I'm telling you. <laughs> but anyway, all of you guys, uh, you're not really strangers. You're like brothers in the cooking world for me, okay? I learn from you, y'all learn from me. And we just share this knowledge back and forth, man. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a truly wonderful thing. But uh, let's see. Back to D's Barbecue, he says, um, What is your opinion on pellet-type smokers? I recently came across a pellet burner conversion kit for the Weber Smoky Mountain online. Have you seen or used this kit? And what are your thoughts? Cheers to you. And if you ever make your way north, you have to try the breweries in Milwaukee. You will be in heaven. Hey, appreciate that, bro. Cheers to you. Wisconsin is one state I've never been in. I could do that. I could make a trip up there. I want to try to check out all the states. Um, pellet smokers. Uh, I'll tell you what. Pellet smokers have their place. I, uh, Well, if you don't have a lot of time to babysit a smoker, pellet smoker works for you. If uh, you're in an apartment complex or someplace where you can't have charcoal you may be able to have a pellet smoker. If you're getting old and you don't want to stay up for those 12 and 15 hour cooks, a pellet smoker will work for you. So it depends on your life circumstances as to what's going on with you, how much time you've got. The uh, I can tell you the pellet smokers that I've had food from, that you know I've tasted the meat that's been cooked on pellet smokers, it's not as good as a real offset stick burner. In fact, it's... It's not actually as good as the Weber Smoky Mountain, in my opinion. You know, some of you may disagree with that. Uh, perhaps one day I'll get a pellet smoker, try it out, and may change my mind. We shall see. But I've never owned a pellet smoker. Uh, I just know that every different kind of cooker has its place. You know, just like every pot in your kitchen, every pan in your kitchen has some place that you can use it with. You know, can't use it for everything. I guess it's less is cast iron Dutch oven. <laughs> you use those pretty much for everything. But anyway, you get you get what I'm saying. You can't use uh, you don't you, you're not going to use all your pits at the same time. You're not going to use all your pots and pans at the same time. Each one has their specific thing they're good at doing. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, D's backyard barbecue. Appreciate you, bro. Next one's from Anthony Danowski. How you doing, Anthony? He says, "Hey, T Roy, I'll watch a lot of your videos, but not all of them yet." Well, that's cool. I got a bunch of videos, man. I think about 550 videos or so. It'll take you a while to go through all those. But I appreciate you watching them. <clears throat> First question he says Have you ever smoked beef roast to make a pot roast style meal with taters and carrots on the side? If so, or if you didn't, how would you approach it? Or would you just say that it's not such a good idea? Thanks for all your videos and the great information. Cheers. Hey, cheers to you, Anthony. I appreciate the question, man. I think I have done a video on that, and if I can find it, I'll put it up here for you. It's probably just something, the title may be something like Smoked Chuck Roast or something, you know, Smoked Pot Roast, I, I don't know. Pretty sure I've done one, though, with carrots and potatoes on the side. Personally, I liked it. Uh, Karen didn't like it so much. Karen doesn't like a lot of smoked flavor in her meat, so when I'm cooking and she's eating the meat as well, a lot of times I have to kind of dial back the amount of smoke. And that's another reason why I use pecan a lot of the time. Pecan 
it's not a heavy smoke flavor. Uh, if I really wanted a lot of smoke flavor, I could use hickory or mesquite or even oak, you know. But pecan's more mild. So that's, that's another reason. Plus, I just like the flavor. Pecan and beef, that's a match made in heaven, man. I love that, that combination of flavors. Good stuff. Um, you know, I, I would cook it just like I would a, a brisket, low and slow, man. And um, no need to inject it, you know. Unless it's like an IR round roast or something, you may want to inject that. But if it's, if it's a chuck roast, bottom round, um, top sirloin, any of those, you don't really need to inject them. I would urge you to get prime if you can find USDA prime because that will have a lot more marbling and keep it a lot juicier and more tender. But just cook it low and slow until it gets up to close to 200 internal. If you need to, wrap it. You know, it'll go through the stall just like a brisket will. So maybe wrap it right when it starts to get that stall going. And uh, just go with it, man. It's so simple to cook. It's just put your regular rubs on there that you would normally do. You know, a little salt, pepper, a little garlic, or your favorite barbecue rub. It's all going to be good. It is. It's going to be fantastic, man. Give it a shot. It's good stuff. I know I've done it. I just can't remember if I did it on video. Good stuff. Appreciate the question, Anthony, and cheers to you, man. Next question is from Perfect Sanchez. He says, hey, T-Roy, love your channel. I just subscribed, and I love the Q&A. Hey, thanks, man. Excuse me, that beer's getting to me. Appreciate that. There you go. Cheers. Glad you're enjoying it. <clears throat> he says, this question's coming from Australia. Oh, he's going to be down under. Perfect Sanchez. Cheers to you, brother. He says, what's the best sort of meat you love to smoke? The best sort of meat. You could be talking about... The grade, which USDA Prime or higher, uh, Wagyu, Kobe, those would work, Akaushi. Or are you talking about the cut of meat? You know, what type of meat? Like, um, I like all sorts of barbecue, you know, beef, pork, lamb, poultry, all that stuff. My absolute favorite to cook and eat, though, would probably be pork St. Louis ribs. That would be... That would be a really, really top-notch on my number one list of the top five or so. Um, yeah, St. Louis ribs from uh, the pork, pork. Beef ribs also real good. I like the little short ribs myself. Uh, some kind, of, some people call them flanking-style ribs. I like those better than the big dinosaur ribs. The uh, brisket's real good. Pulled pork's always real good. And uh, those bigger roasts, like pork butt and brisket, those go a long way, man. In fact, one of my favorite things to make in wintertime is to, to make a, a chili, homemade chili, out of the leftover brisket point. Smoked brisket point in chili is phenomenal. If you had not tried that yet, you got to give that a shot. Good stuff. All right, I appreciate the question there. Perfect Sanchez. Cheers to you, mate. All right, as always, my buddy Andy Olson, Provo Pit Barbecue. Y'all go check out his channel as well, man. Andy, what you got for me, man? He says, uh, oh, T-Roy, how are you, my friend? Congrats, congrats on becoming a grandfather. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate that, brother. I'm doing fantastic. Living life. Cheers to you, bro. Life is good, man. Real good. Hope all is well out there and uh, on, on your end as well, Andy. <clears throat> All right, Andy says, this is a long one, folks. And folks, if you can, try to keep the questions short. I don't mind the long ones, but a lot of times I have to, like, I cut that part out. You know, I'll read it myself, but I don't really usually want to read that much for one question on video. So I may just ask, I may just ask your question on video and not the full thing, but Andy's a good friend. I'm going to go ahead and read the, the whole comment that he made. So y'all stick around. <laughs> Andy says, three years ago I had a Kamado Joe. I really wasn't into the whole smoldering wood flavor thing, so I unloaded it. Um, yeah, that's why I got rid of mine too, Andy. <laughs> he said, I also hated the latch set top setup as well. Uh, mine didn't even have a latch. I had the old style, man. He says, but the real reason I no longer have it is because I cooked fish in it one time with a mess of rockfish and trout and never got the smell out even after smoking with it 18 plus times afterwards. Whoa. Yeah. 
And that's like if you use lighter fluid in your Kamado Joe or your Big Green Egg. You'll get that lighter fluid flavor in the ceramics. So, I, yeah, you don't want to cook fish and crabs and stuff like that in there. Yeah, it's, it's going to mess it up, man. You have that flavor in all the meat you cook subsequent to that. So I totally understand that, Andy. All right, Andy says, uh, well, with winter coming, I'm going to do a smoke. I'm going to be mostly smoking with my UDS project I'm working on. Cool, man. Homemade or UDS. Homemade UDS. That's good times, man. I should maybe try that sometime. Huh. I love my pit barrel cooker, though. Um, Andy. Okay, we're back to Andy. He says, uh, I hope to have it finished and ready by the end of this month. Uh, sprung for a Huntsaker Vortex basket system. Wondering if you've ever seen it. Curious your opinion of it. And yes, I plan on using it in the, using. I plan on using my Santa Maria grills in the winter, even with it snowing. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> yeah, a little rain, sleet, snow, whatever. It's not gonna stop me either, Andy. Rock on, bro. Keep that smoke rolling. The Hunt Saker Vortex. Yeah. I've seen those online. I have never used one or seen one in person. Looks like it may work pretty doggone good, but uh, I've never used one, man. But it's it's kind of like the pit barrel cooker's got that vortex uh, wind currents inside when you're cooking with it. So I'm sure it's pretty much the same thing. You get a nice top to bottom, even cooking. Uh, so go for it, man. You know, let me know how it works out for you. Yeah, share that with all the rest of us, Andy. Let us know how that works out for you on your UDS. And uh, appreciate the support, and uh, as always, cheers to you, brother Andy. Where are we at here? Let's see. All right, there we go. Next question is from Robert Candle. Um, Robert Campbell, sorry. Brother Troy. Just wanted to say how much I enjoy your Tuesday chats. I appreciate the support, man. Glad you're enjoying it. I really enjoy doing these, too. And, again, I apologize I'm a little rusty. I get back. I get my mojo back here in the next week or two. Y'all stay tuned, man. He says, I have a question which might, be, which might seem kind of weird, but I never, heard it, I never heard this subject come up. There's a grocery store where I was living in Missouri that smoked ribs and chicken on a Southern Price stainless steel smoker. The smoke smell that came from that smoker just had the smell like, just had a smell that said barbecue. Whether I use pecan or hickory in my Weber Smoky Mountain or my Weber Kettle, I just can't seem to get that unique barbecue smoke smell, even though I can get the thin blue smoke. Any suggestions and cheers to you. Hey, again, cheers to you, Robert. There you go. You're not really going to get that smell from your Weber Smoky Mountain or your kettle. Because those are not iron. Those are, um, it, it's metal, but it's like ceramic coated. When you get a true stick burner type offset, it's, it's real metal. And that smoke just kind of sticks to the inside walls of that smoker. And of course, it may take five years or so plus, you know, to to get that smoke flavor in your pit. Um, in fact, I, what, what that reminds me of is I had the same question when I first got my Yoder Wichita. I had the same question. I was like, why isn't this smelling like when I walk into a barbecue place, you know? Because the, the, the barbecue just is like in the walls and the ceiling. It's, it's all over, man, you know, usually. But it's because it was a new offset that I had. After about the third fourth year I was getting to the point where I could lift the lid and I would get that aroma of like barbecues cooking on it even without it fired up so that is a sign that that is a very old pit a very well made pit and that it uh, it can produce some wonderful tasting barbecue usually it depends on the pit master of course but usually the pit is the one that does most of the work so uh, it's just an old pit man that's why any of these barbecue joints you walk into, if they've got a true stick burner in there, then uh, you're, you're going to wind up getting that same aroma, especially if they've been in business five plus years. But you won't get that smell from your Weber Smoky Mountain or your kettle. At least I don't think so. 
Next question is from Matt Brassel. He says, hey, T-Roy, a guy I work with, uh, a guy at work, got me a Wagyu black grade brisket from Snake River Farms as a thank you gift. Ooh, boy, howdy. That's some good brisket right there, man. Yes, sir. You got a good friend over there at work. <laughs> Hope you give him some of that when you cook it up. Anyway, Matt says, I've never cooked anything this premium. Is there any difference uh, than the non-premiums like Choice or Certified Angus Briskets? Any tips? Dang, man. Sorry. Yeah, Matt, uh, what you will find is that those briskets from uh, the, the those higher grade briskets like Wagyu or the USD Prime, uh, they're more marbled than your select choice cab that kind of thing they're more marbled so you will notice that they will cook faster instead of say an hour and a half per pound at 225 250 you're probably looking more like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes per pound for something that's really well marbled like that snake river farms brisket so judge your cook based on that that you're going to cook it faster you don't really need to inject that I mean you can if you want to if you just want a little little extra flavor on the inside, but it's going to be plenty juicy enough. Even the flat will be juicy. Uh, not really a lot different other than it cooks faster. And it's a lot more marbled, so it'll be more tender and juicy. That's the main differences. Uh, you're going to enjoy that brisket. Definitely enjoy it. What I would worry about is overcooking the flat. Um... If you notice the points cooking faster than the flat, spin that baby around so that the flat's kind of pointed at the other end. You know, do a 180 with it. And, uh, or if you got it this way and the fire's on the side, you know, flip it 180 that way. So, uh, anyway, so you try to get some even cooking because you don't want to overcook that, that flat. The point, you can overcook a little bit and still be okay. But don't, don't overcook the flat because that will dry it out and it'll just crumble apart on you when you try to cut it. So just be careful about it. I'd bring it up to, usually, like when I do Lil Bell's briskets, they're USD Prime or Wagyu. I usually like to pull them about 197, 198 internal. Every once in a while, I may go up to 200 or 202, but usually around 198, I'll pull them. So uh, just double check it a few times with your meat probe. See how tender it is when you probe it. It should probe like it's going through room temperature butter, okay? When it gets that tender, pull it. Wrap it, let it rest for at least one hour, preferably two hours or more. And uh, once the internal temp comes back down to about one, eh, you can go as low as 170 if you really want to cut, but I'd like to drop it down. Just leave it tinted and full until the internal temp gets down to about 140, 145. That's how I do it. Anyway, that's a great question, man. Enjoy that brisket. And don't forget to make some chili with some of the leftover point. Try it. It's good. I got some chili videos on my recipe. Uh, chili recipes on my videos. Go ever check it out, man. Good stuff. Next question is from Never Could Figure It Out. <laughs> That's a cool name. All right. <laughs> Hang on. I need a beer. <laughs> All right. He says, um, what's your favorite thing to cook on your pit brow cooker? I would say probably pork ribs. Yeah. Whether it be baby back or St. Louis. Man, it cooks up some fine ribs. Second favorite thing I cook on there is be some chicken. I love me some chicken, whether it be whole or spatchcock or uh, chicken leg quarters just hanging. Those are wonderful. Good stuff, man, real good stuff. So chicken and pork ribs. He's got a follow-up thing here. He says, also, I'm going to attempt to do a whole turkey in mine. Do you have any tips to do a whole turkey in my pit barrel cooker? Uh, I've never cooked a turkey in mine that I can remember. I've cooked whole chicken in there. I just I hung the chicken on the little spigot thing that they sell you with the pit brow cooker. You know, you drive it through and it's got a flat disc on the bottom that the bird sits on and it just hangs from the rebar. Worked out fantastic though. Really did. Uh, the, uh, the thing that you may want to do though is you may want to inject the, the turkey breasts. At least you'll get a little bit more flavor. Because I don't like bland turkey. I like to season my turkey from within. So I would either uh, brine it overnight, you know, 12 hours or so. 
before you cook it or go ahead and inject it so you get some flavors inside the meat itself and as far as uh, putting rub on it I put some rub on the underside of the skin and maybe after you got the bird on there maybe spritz it a little bit put some color on that uh, on that the skin or brush some butter or olive oil on the skin if you want to do that but be careful if you're brushing oil of any kind because that'll drip down and create a flame up flare up in your charcoal so be careful about that you're probably better off just uh, injecting it and um, uh, yeah just spritz it man spritz it with some kind of heck I don't know everybody uses apple juice I don't really use apple juice a whole lot I don't know. Just let it cook, man. Pit barrel cooker is going to do all the work. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to love it. You will. It's going to be good stuff. I'd practice on a bird, though. Do a whole chicken first. See how that works out. So give you an idea of what to expect. And chicken's only, you know, three, four bucks. You know, maybe five bucks. Cheers to you. It's going to be good. Folks, that's all I got for you today. Again, if I didn't ask your question, or if I didn't put your question in this episode, I'm likely to do so in the near future. So if you, uh, if, if you didn't hear your question, just stay tuned for a future chat. If you've got questions for me, ask them in the comment section down below. Be sure and check out the description box. Hit show more like I mentioned earlier. And uh, I thank you very much for all the questions. Thank you for the well wishes. Everybody's fine here on my end. Life is good. And it's good to be back, folks. It really is. And y'all stay tuned for a very special episode coming up. Not only with my grandma, Mama Jean, 93 years old now. Whew. She's getting on up there. But um, and she's still cooking in the kitchen, folks. That's where I learned how to cook from her and my mom and my dad. But it was fun cooking with her. So y'all stay tuned for that video along with some other special videos coming up. I appreciate it. Uh, if y'all like this kind of stuff, y'all give me some thumbs up. By all means, I hope you share the video. And when you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>